join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Remember to silence your cell phones if you have them with you. <laughs> Our first item on the agenda, uh, number four, because we had some closed session interviews earlier today, citizen concerns. For anyone who would like to approach the board on an item that's not already listed on the agenda. Hearing none, I have five and approval of the agenda for September 5th. I'll move it. Second by Taylor. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to the Passes 5 0. Item 6 through 10 constitute a consent agenda of routine action items to be considered by one motion. Items passed unanimously unless a separate roll call vote is requested by a board member. Item 6 is approval of the minutes of the August 29th meeting. Item 7 is approval of the claims. <laughs> item 8 from board administration is, includes item A, approval of the notice of property sale resolution for parcels, also known as 1667 and 1673 West Luna Avenue. Setting that for Tuesday, September 19th at 4.35 p.m. Item B is approval of notice of property sale resolution for parcels, also known as 1924 Ingleside Avenue. And setting that for Tuesday, September 19th at 4.37 p.m. Item 9 from Human Resources includes item A, approval of the memorandum of personnel transactions. And item B, authorization of the chairman to sign the authorization to initiate the hiring process. <coughs> item 10 from Secondary Roads, County Engineer Mark Nera, is consideration of a permit for use of the right of way for an underground utility known as Mid American Energy. This completes the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second the motion by DeWitt to approve the consent agenda. Is there discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5 0. Item 11 from Human, Re Human Resources, Director Gilliland, uh, would you like to discuss this information item, the presentation of award certificate, David Clyde? Yes, we started uh, approximately two years ago uh, recognizing the blood, blood bank and the drive to, uh, to give blood. Uh, we do have a certificate of award for one of our employees for four hours of paid time off because of the fact that uh, he has donated a gallon of blood. And with that, David, we'd like to recognize you for your generous contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well done, David. I hope you still feel okay uh, losing all that blood. But uh, I understand it was over time. Yes. So, very good. Item 12 from Conservation. Uh, Don Snyder's on this agenda item. It's for action. This is approval of a proclamation for Woodbury County, Lus Hills, and Heritage Week. And I've been asked to read this resolution, but first, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, Rich Pope is here somewhere. <laughs> Rich Pope is the president of the, of the Lus Hills Alliance, and I serve as the, on the board as well for Woodbury County. Um, the uh, Lus Hills and Heritage Week is, is a, a new celebration and recognition that we have. Um, been uh, trying to promote throughout the Lus Hills region, and uh, Governor Reynolds signed the proclamation on the 24th of August, and uh, other consecutive counties within the Lus Hills seven region, seven county region, have been signing them. So we're bringing this to you today to. Um, Woodbury County will be the sixth of seven. Six to seven. Okay, so we're not the final yet. That's, That's right. good. <laughs> we got the information late, but anyway, we're happy to. Uh, um, bring this to you today and ask that you consider it for a uh, proclamation to promote the Lus Hills and economic development, tourism, and uh, natural, historical, and cultural resources. We are not last and certainly not least. Never. <laughs> Any comments from board members? Uh, Supervisor Potterbaum, you are our representative of conservation. Except Supervisor. The wit has been in front of most of the meetings <laughs> during my work. <laughs> well, that's how it works sometimes. I will read the proclamation of Woodbury County. 
uh, Lust Hills and Heritage Week. It states, whereas the Lust Hills region of Western Iowa includes some of Iowa's most beautiful and precious, precious cultural, historic, and natural resources, Lus, pronounced Lus, a German term meaning loose or crumbly, is a yellowish sedimentary deposit of windblown silt forming a distinctive 640,000 acre range of hills running parallel to the Missouri River, 220 miles from Mound City, Missouri to Westfield, Iowa, passing through Fremont, Mills, Pottawatomie, Harrison, Monona, Woodbury, and Plymouth counties. Lus Hills, like Iowa's, are rare, found in no other part of the world except near the Yellow River in China. We've discussed that actually at a previous board meeting. Whereas Woodbury County, Iowa lies within the Lus Hills region of Iowa, whereas the Lus Hills Bluffs, as they are sometimes called, have a wealth of special wildlife, trees, and prairie plants, the state cited 39 rare animal and plant species there, the largest concentration in Iowa. Hill, hills animals, such as the Plains pocket mouse, ornate box turtle, Great Plains skink, and spadefoot toad are becoming rare and even endangered. Three-fourths of Iowa's original native prairies are there. Whereas the Lus Hills region is known as one of this county's prehistoric gems, home to more than 800 archaeological sites. Humans have been crossing through or living in the region for at least the past 12,000 years. Nationally significant are the late settlements of Mill Creek, 900 AD, the Glenwood Lodge sites, 1000 AD, Kimball Valley Village, 1100 AD, and the findings at the Turin Gravel Pit, 3000 BC. Later, the region was used by the Iowa, Odo, Omaha, Sac, Fox for a short time, the Potawatomi to me, peoples. Whereas the Lus Hills region celebrates a rich history of exploration and pioneer settlement, from the Lewis and Clark expedition and the great Mormon migration to the Mormon, California, and Oregon trails that tempted pioneers westward, the Underground Railroad, and the old transcontinental Lincoln Highway. Whereas the communities such as ours that lie within the Lus Hills continue to offer a vibrant, vibrant place in the culture, history, and arts of the region, drawing upon their unique heritage and geological influence. Many towns within the region are threaded together by the Lus Hills National Scenic Byway, named one of the 10 most scenic roads in the U.S. by nonprofit Scenic America. Currently, more than 60 parks offer a glimpse of the impressive nature of the hills and the six national landmarks located there. Whereas a significant grassroots effort is underway in our community and elsewhere within the Lus Hills region to celebrate the unique historical, cultural, geological, and aesthetic character of the Lus Hills, whereas on August 24th, 2017, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds proclaimed September 23 to October 1, 2017 as Lus Hills and Heritage Week and urges public, private, and volunteer groups during this time to promote the Lus Hills, educate the public about them, and encourage all to see and enjoy this rare and pre precious region. Whereas an extensive list of events and sites within the Lus Hills featured for Lus Hills and Heritage Week is published online. Therefore, we, the governing body of Woodbury County, Iowa, likewise resolve and proclaim our support for Lus Hills and Heritage Week and urge the public, private, and volunteer groups within and around our community during this time to promote the Lus Hills, educate the public about them, and encourage all to see and enjoy this rare and precious region. And I'll move approval of this proclamation. Second. Second by Radig. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, if I uh, recall, we sent you to the, the less soil of China yes, near did. the Yellow River, but not at taxpayer expense. So this is a very good thing. So thank you very much. Thank yes. A lot of, oh, sorry. Go ahead. A lot of uh, people say and think I was flat, but areas like this are, as it says, a gem. Uh, people find beautiful places to build homes and, and recreate around the Lus Hills. So. Would you like to speak to any uh, engagement or community education initiatives that you would use something like this you know, as a springboard? Absolutely, absolutely. There are several events um, uh, planned in the Sioux City and Woodbury County region and, and in actually communities throughout the seven counties, but in Woodbury County specifically, uh, the Dorothy Pico Nature Center and Woodbury County Conservation Board are offering different events, um, prairie hikes, prairie awareness. They, we also, are in Sioux City, are hosting at Briarcliff University, John Wu, who is from China, and he's going to be speaking about the Lus Hills soils and hills in China. So and that date escapes me, but we will have all that information that's posted online and as seen there. So appreciate the support. Um, and I would only that. comment because Dawn is the chair of this little group. We have a <coughs> poster contest for youth that is going to be in all seven counties, including Woodbury County. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to some good involvement there in the school. Right. 
currently the entries um, are open for all ages K through 12, whether they're in public or private school or homeschool, and uh, we encourage folks to uh, look online for those instructions and submit their entries. There, there are cash prizes awarded and each county will have separate, um, each category in each county will receive uh, awards as well as some overall awards for the seven counties. Very so good. The overall judges are standing here. So. <laughs> Can't be bought. No. Well, no. that truly is a fascinating, fascinating connection to one other place in the world. And if one of you would like to uh, help with the judging, you're more than welcome. Okay. I was more interested in entering for the, the prize, but I get there. You go. Well, well re-enroll back in school. Oh. Got some children of their own that wanted to look at uh, what the other kids are doing in the schools and public to become involved in good ways. Very good. Thank you for your time and Thank your support. You. Thank you for bringing it forward. Uh, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Those say nay, passes 5-0. We are three minutes uh, until our 4.45 p.m. set time, so we'll begin and skip ahead to item 14A from Building Services, Director Schmitz, an action item to approve, uh, approval of Cook's Correctional Kitchen Equipment Order through CBM Managed Food Service is quoted and not to exceed $125,000. Um, the item f f uh, before you is to approve the costs uh, for the kitchen equipment uh, to be amortized over 10 years through the CBM contract, the food service contract. Um, the cost that you see before you with the associated <coughs> equipment on it uh, does not have uh, the taxes added to it, which or there will be taxes uh, since it's going through CBM. Um, so we're asking uh, to approve the full amount of $125,000 uh, as part of item A. I'll move approval. Second. Second by Potabon. Discussion on the first motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. And the second motion. Uh, the second motion is to approve quotes received from uh, Goodwin Tucker, C.W. Souter, Thompson Electric, Midwest Mechanical um, for modifications and modifications to the existing kitchen and old conference room and the installation of the kitchen equipment in those areas. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Taylor, second by Radig. Discussion. As you note, this is a major step in closing the outdated Prairie Hills facility. So it's a, a good good time for this, uh, yes. And timeline for having everything stood up and ready to give a tour to the supervisors? <clears throat> I think a, a, good, a good timeline uh, or the best timeline I can give you is probably, um, probably eight weeks out. Some of the equipment is expected to take approximately six weeks. Um, so I think eight weeks is an optimistic. Uh, <coughs> area hopefully hopefully some of it will arrive sooner we'll see how that goes well as you noted this has been a lengthy process and appreciate your time and effort to bring it to the board you bet. Uh, all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those say nay passes five zero thanks kenny we'll return momentarily to your items we are at a 4 45 <laughs> p.m set time uh, 13 is an action item uh, not to exceed $850,000 general obligation capital loan notes. Uh, first is item A, which is the public hearing on the authorization of loan agreement and the issuance of notes to evidence the obligation of the county thereunder. Are there is there anyone to speak at this public hearing? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, I move that the hearing be closed. I'll second the motion by Taylor. This, is there a discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Item B then is approval of resolution instituting proceedings to take additional action. Dennis, do you want to summarize any of what we're being asked to vote on? Okay, the 850000 is actually for the purchase of radios for the Sheriff's Office, Public Safety, Conservation, and Emergency Services. Even though we are not going to exceed the 850, the actual true cost is 832,912 dollars and 25 cents. What this resolution will do, and this hearing has done, 
We'll provide the opportunity to borrow the money next May. We have up to 18 months to borrow the money under this resolution here. We usually do all of our borrowing in May, but we're a step ahead, which is good, to approve borrowing the money, even though we're spending ahead of time. On section four, I believe, on page two, I'm going by memory. We did do a secondary roads on some projects down there with TIF money, but this covers us that we can spend it before we borrow. We're letting the public know the intent of where we're going. Would you say that's a unique provision or a best practice that we'll continue to do? It'll be a best practice we'll continue to do because we do a lot of projects, a lot of times even with the building services before we borrow the money. So it's something we will be doing in the future as a best practice. Comments or questions? I'll move to approve the resolution. Second. Second by DeWitt. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those say nay. Passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. We return to item 14 with uh, Director Kenny Schmitz, and sub item B for action is approval of proposals from Goodwin Tucker, CW Souter. Uh, well, was that the second part of the? Yes, we've. Okay. Yes. Excuse me then. We had already moved on items A and B. Item C is the Trosper Hoy Juvenile Detention Master Control and Door Project. Uh, today we received uh, bids for the uh, Trosper Hoyt Juvenile Master Control uh, project. Uh, unfortunately, we have only received one bid for that. Um, the bid was uh, presented by Nelson Construction in the amount of $552,905. Uh, the cost uh, and the bid presented to us uh, seems a bit high and out of range. Therefore, I, I recommend that we are throwing bids out. And uh, I have Kevin Rost here with GGA Architects uh, who'd like to speak for a few moments and uh, provide us uh, with, with some thoughts and some options going forward. Um, also, as part of that, your next one of your next items is 14D where we're asking for a hearing for the Trosper Hoyt Juvenile Detention Master Control. Um, I'd like the board to consider uh, uh, setting a, uh, a, a future date and time uh, for any hearing related with that project. Uh, Kevin? Kevin Ross, Goldwood Group Architects. Um, as Kenny had mentioned, yeah, we received one bid on the project today from the Juvenile Detention Center. Uh, unfortunately, it was only one bid. Um, given the numbers that come in, I think we'd like the opportunity to evaluate that bid with the one contractor that submitted it and look at potential for repackaging or rescoping the project to rebid at a future date. I think there's some opportunity there. I think we just need a, a chance to talk with the guys and find out where, where things come in higher or why it come in higher than what we anticipated on the project. Mr. Taylor. So a couple of questions. First off, I uh, appreciate we have a weekly meeting now um, between our building services director in conference call. So the original was $450,000, the estimate, is that right? Correct. So we're about $100,000 over what we thought. What are the legal means or processes by which you just simply rebid? I think we would have to rescope the project in a manner like for the state was So in other words, you can't just, we're going to keep rebidding until we right. get until the we price we like, so right? So per the, per, per the code sections, we have to change, if we choose to go out to rebid, we have to we have to change the project significantly. We have to make a significant change in doing so. Which, go ahead. Second question is, you have a pre-bid meeting in which you have one individual, and that was the case in this instance, correct? That is correct. So how do you uh, solicit, for lack of a better term, other bidders? Because if I'm the only one in the room, you see where I'm going with this? Costs just went up. Right. Um, right, and that's a very good question. I think we'd like to, to reach out to a few more subcontractors and general contractors to see if there's some interest in depending on how we rescope the project. But see, yeah, we can't. <clears throat> I think right now a lot of people are busy. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of participation because of the number of jobs that are going on right now. So I think we'd like to look at an ideal date to rebid this. Of course, there is some more availability from contractors and subcontractors. And then my last, well, second to last question is, if you do the rescoping, I understand that there may be four doors that we had talked about um, that would be ideal to do in coordination with the LEC expansion project, but I understand that we're waiting on a staffing study, and so the timeline of that may be 
uh, not fortuitous to do so. Is that something that could be part of the rescoping potentially, or taking those doors out, or yeah, right. absolutely. That, that was part of our discussions right now on how we could rescope it. We've got a couple plans and some areas to head. Okay, and then my last question. Sorry for my ignorance, but the public hearing for the Trasper Hoyt, the, the one that we're getting ready to do right now, um, is that being delayed? specifically because we're not ready to um, potentially move on this? So it's being delayed because a legal requirement is that it, it has to happen in four days, but not greater than 20 days before you enter into a contract. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't mean to speak legally, but that's, that's what the code section says. Okay. By us delaying the acceptance next week, we would no longer fall within that four to 20 day time frame that, that we're required to follow. So we will not be holding today's public hearing, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. That's all I got. <coughs> Questions? Mm -hmm. it seems to be a consensus on, on the recommendation. Does anyone object? Very well, so project will be rescoped. I have Thank the you. original uh, bid submission um, I'll give to uh, Pat uh, for his filing purposes. Then uh, Abigail, procedurally, how should we go ahead with item 14D? Well, the thin notice says you can have the hearing. It's just a matter of you, can't, you would have to have another hearing later. So, I mean, if, so, if people are here to speak for or against the project, if they think yours is a bad idea or something like that, you can still let them speak, but you're going to have to hold another hearing. Well, we can just move to delete it from the agenda, could we not? Well, we could do that. Ms. Taylor? I, I think we should go ahead and hold the public hearing, and if nobody's here, then we just, it'll take an extra sentence. Well, it's, you're right, it's been noted. Sure. Uh, if we wanted to remove it, we could have done that earlier. Um, so then we are a couple minutes ahead of that date, uh, or date, time. Kenny, would you like to summarize anything else in a brief moment um, overall? Just as Ms. Kevin said and Shane reiterated overall, we'd like to take a look at this and, and see how we can rescope this thing um, and see, see where, uh, you know, the numbers we weren't expecting may have come in higher. Take a look at that, analyze it, and, and figure out okay, what made this a lot higher than what we had planned on it? And then maybe that's part of that scope change we can try to uh, massage or manipulate a little bit to, to uh, if we redid this thing, make it come back a little. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that find a better date to, to bid as well, too. Mm -hmm. You know, for some reason, we can get this in conjunction with any of the other projects, the LMC or something like that. You know, that would be beneficial as well, too, just because of the mobilization cost for some of these out-of-state specific uh, subcontractors. That's the logistical hurdle is the economies of scale and making sure you can take advantage of that. Anytime the county only receives one bid or any, any other place where you only receive one bid, it's, it's usually not favorable. Very well, so we'll be asked to set a, another public hearing at a later date. With that, we are at our 5.55 p.m. set time, item 14D. The public hearing for the Trasper Hoyt Juvenile Detention Master Control and Door Project is now open if anyone would like to speak for or against this uh, item. I'm Steve Nelson with Nelson Construction who submitted the bid. Uh, so just to give a little input to help you guys going forward. The same problem I have as being the, uh, the only bidder is we only had one bid on the securities and the 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 equipment coming to me, and I think as Kevin and I talked, those people just aren't out there. But another thing we had in here before, when I turned the bid in, I told Kevin there's a $25,000 contingency because there's some electrical we weren't sure about, so we added that to the bid. So, but if I can help, I mean, I know you guys can't award the job based off what you hear, but I'd gladly show them my, my information and some of the results if I could, but same way, we only had one bidder bid the securities and the door hardware so and that was over three hundred and fifty thousand 
just for that. Anyway, thank you. Yep. I appreciate having uh, good faith uh, to come and explain that because otherwise we wouldn't know that the, the bulk of that was being passed on, essentially not your cost. So thank you very much. Yeah, th thank you, sir. Helpful to put a face with a bid. Anyone else to speak in this public hearing? Hearing none, I'll move the hearing to be closed. Second. Second, Second by Taylor. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Say nay. Passes 5-0. Item 15 uh, from Early Economic Development, Director David Gleiser is an action item. Approval to accept uh, the proposal and approve budgeting up to $7,293 in local option sales tax to pay for half of the membership dues for rural cities that want a Simcoe membership in FY 17-18. Thank you, Chairman Ong. David Gleiser, Rural Economic Development Director. So this is a follow-up from last week when the board charged me with the task of getting a proposal for Simco to provide uh, dues-based membership to our 14 rural cities. Um, the backup materials show uh, the annual due uh, cost, the cost of dues for the 14 rural cities in question. Um, I would say at this point there are one, two, three, four, five, six communities that have uh, signed to renew their membership with Simco. Um, half of their dues, uh, the county's cost would be roughly $3,600. Last year, we did budget uh, the full $7,293. Uh, we only expended $4,288. So right now, they are still obligated um, $3,005. Uh, talked with Dennis Butler, and he can de-obligate those funds. Um, as well as add some additional funds to get us at that $7,292.50. I will make the calls uh, to all of the rural cities that uh, have not already signed up um, and make them aware that in this agreement, um, the scope of services are essentially the same, except for we are going to have planning staff at Simcoe meet with them uh, initially to develop a project priority list and Simcoe staff, as well as myself, will be calling them at least once quarterly to make sure that they uh, uh, aren't uh, losing services that um, we could be providing them. So just going to basically follow up with them more and ask if there's anything we can do to help. So, Well, this is, this is a good initiative. I think we have leveraged. 10 times the dollars we put in, in direct and indirect cost, as you mentioned. And I think it makes sense to, to start with the uh, uh, skin in the game uh, analogy. And that's proven helpful. So I'm very supportive of this. Any I'll other move it. comments? I'll second the motion by Radig. Discussion or comments or questions on how this will move forward? What I'll probably end up doing is working with Dennis Butler to get those numbers deobligated and reobligated, and then once we get a firm commitment on the cities that do or don't want to participate, I can either send the board a memo or come back in front of you like this and give you an update on um, the balance, and then let Dennis deobligate the balance. So, I'll very good. Hearing no other discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Thank you. Item 16 from Secondary Roads, County Engineer Mark Nera includes action item A. This is to receive and consider bids for project number on 220th Street. Project number M. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm not sure we received any bids for the first project. I do have one that's unlabeled, so I will open it and see. Mystery, mystery bid. There is interest in this. I've received some emails asking no. the status. Yeah. Different project. Um, on the seal code, yeah, I've had a number of inquiries from the public. Um, I guess what we only had one response request on doing a portion of the work. Um, finding seal code contractors today is getting more and more difficult. 
um, the ones that uh, Ben spent a good deal of time on the phone last week uh, contacting a few of them that we know of. Uh, a lot of them are booked out into next year. They're doing work for regular clients, some of the cities and towns who do that type of work regularly, and they're, they're booked up on that portion of the work. Um, there is an interested contractor in doing the uh, reclamation part, which uh, we may work to get a quote from that individual and at least get that portion of the project completed this year, put some type of a uh, temporary seal on it to get us through the winter or, or move the work over into next spring and then we might have a little more favorable time period for that to work. But, um, we'll rescope and, and see where we end up. Like I said, we only had one responsive contractor for the uh, reclamation part. Apparently he was unable to secure somebody to assist in the uh, other portion of the project, which is the seal coat. Uh, this is the uh, permit, you approved it. I guess on to item B. Okay. With the chairs. Go ahead with item B. Permission. This is for a uh, bridge replacement with a box culvert. This is a replacement of a, of a uh, short span bridge under County Road uh, D22, right on the city county corporate line with the city of Cushing. Um, they're a town under 400, so it's a part of market extension. It is a board's jurisdiction. Uh, the structure has been posted due to some severe deterioration. Um, we've designed a box culvert to replace it at this location. First bid is from Midwest Contracting, LLC of Marshall, Minnesota. Bid bond was included. Total bid price, 175,375 dollars. One seven five three seven five. Next is from Dixon Construction of Correctionville, Iowa. Bid bond included. Bid price, $145,852.80. Next bid is from Nelson and Rock Contracting of Ottawa, Iowa. Bond is included. Total bid price $159,711.69. One five nine seven one one sixty nine. We have a bid from Peterson Contractors <coughs> Incorporated of Rhinebeck, Iowa. Bond is included. Total bid price one hundred fifty seven thousand four hundred seventy dollars and twenty five cents. One five seven four seven zero. This 
appears to be the final bid from L.A. Carlson Contracting of Merrill, Iowa. Bid bond is included. Total bid price, $158,000. $693.68, 158-693-68. So are there any irregularities in Dixon's bid? I would like to examine it. To, we did have a uh, uh, cast in place option on this project. I don't know which option they pursued. I want to make sure there's no mistakes in the bid. Okay. Um, I would prefer that uh, the board return these to the engineer's office for review. So moved. Second. Second by Radig. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. <coughs> Item C then is to receive quotes for HMA levelers for 2017. First bid is from Knife River Midwest of Sioux City, Iowa. Let the bid tabs get around. Who was it again, Mark? Knife River. Knife River of Sioux City. Thank you. Total quotation for the work is scoped $75,346.34. The uh, next quote is from Henningson Construction of Atlantic, Iowa. Uh, total quota price $101,585.20. Looking at the unit prices, uh, I think we can recommend a ward to Knife River Midwest. It is higher than what our estimate was, but we haven't let one of these type projects in a while. So uh, what was it per ton on the? Uh, 215.75. Okay, yeah, make a big difference. Yeah, I'll move the approval to Knife River. I'll second the motion by Radig. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Item D is to receive quotes for slurry levelers 2017. That was the mystery bid. <laughs> Thank you. received only one bid. Uh, bid price is $116,596.25. How important is this to have done? <laughs> of other counties. Uh, Plymouth County has done the last slurry level bid we did. Um, we did that right ahead of Rag Drive. I'd like to take a look at those prices and see how this compares um, before we make an award. So I recommend they re return to the engineer for review. What would happen if you, I mean, what, did, you know, what do you expect to find? I just need to refamiliarize myself with the prices. Okay. Um, I, you know, the other thing we might end up doing is, is taking a look at an alternative method for repairs. How many bridges are needing this? What do we have, two bridges on it, Ben? The vast majority of the work is uh, crack leveling, um, where we have the rollover cracks from transverse cracking on, on county roads. Um, the slurry is very good at filling those areas, bringing back our right quality. Um, <coughs> The roads that we had proposed for this are in the neighborhood of uh, 12 to 16 years old since their last resurfacing, and that's when that uh, 
rollover on those cracks occurs. Ride quality is deteriorating, but basically we have good slabs between those cracks. So we're trying to, re to improve them and, and, uh, and maintain our, our life expectancy out there. With where this price is, I think we need to take a look at the scope of the project as part of it. Um, it's getting right up there above what I had budgeted. That's one of the reasons for my hesitation. Well, at some point, you can almost redeck. Is hmm? can you almost do a new deck? Um, no, this isn't for an entire bridge deck. Uh, we have what four bridge approaches that are part of this project. Um, <coughs> well, it's whole bridges for about this price. <laughs> Pardon me. You're getting like a whole bridge for almost the same price. Well, again, what we have is settlement on the pavement ahead of the bridge, so the bridge deck is fine. This is where we have the bump coming off of the bridge. It isn't a deep enough bump that we can use asphalt on the repair. The slurry is only about a three eighths thick layer, so we can lay it in to two or three layers to get us up to that total thickness and, and restore that smoothness. But the bridge approaches are only a part of it. Uh, the rest of it is that slurry track leveling and an attempt to improve ride quality out there. Uh, again, majority of the work was concentrated in the north part of the county. K49, K64, uh, D12, uh, D12 is the majority of the work. Okay. Uh, again, I'd, I'd like to take a look at it, um, possibly discuss with the contractor if you consider holding those prices for a smaller job. Um, this isn't a, this is work we've been trying to get to get some improvements on to extend our life between resurfacing projects. And we've had that discussion, I think, before. Um, we're getting about enough money a year in our farm to market program to resurface 10 to 12 miles per year. We need to do something to extend the life of our pavements because uh, it's putting us out there beyond the life expectancy of a, an asphalt resurfacing. Slurry leveling of the cracks, um, seal coating, microsurfacing, those type things help extend your life and get more longevity out of the pavement. Um, 116,000 is, is up there for what I had budgeted this year for, for pavement rehabilitation. So, uh, again, I'd like to take a look, examine it, perhaps uh, visit with the contractor about it, and uh, again, see if they'd hold that price and maybe rescope the project smaller within my budget. Move to receive and refer to the county engineer for recommendation. Second. Second, Second by Potabon discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Item E for action is to consider approval of federal aid project agreement for project number as stated. Parent 134 is a good way to refer to it. That, that tag will hang with it for a very long time. Um, we have uh, arranged the, or we received money through our region, um, the uh, SRTPA uh, regional planning affiliate for um, money to resurface our county road D54. We worked on this project uh, from Danbury to county road L27. 2015, was it? And uh, we were able to obtain funding for 2018 to complete that project. Um, we're looking at a million dollars in RPA money, uh, an estimated 70 or 750,000 in Woodbury County farm to market funds to complete the work. Recommend approval of the agreement. We'll move it. Second. Second by Radig. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. This Item also requires the uh, signature of the county auditor. Item F is to consider approval of plans for project number M-HC 17-4. <coughs> This project is for repair of 100, 
Hungry Canyon's weir that was damaged in the 2016 storm event uh, back June 15, 2016. Uh, we have $67,000, a little over that, in Hungry Canyon's grant to assist with the cost of that repair. Um, we're proposing a letting September 19th for the project. Recommend approval. So move, Mr. Chair. I'll second the motion by Taylor. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Item G is to receive quotes for one new tractor for the secondary roads department. Um, we currently have five uh, farm style tractors. Um, we utilize two of the, or well, three of those for roadside mowing. Two operate a boom mower, um, or one operates a boom mower, the other two operate bat wing mowers behind them. Um, we have a couple small tractors we use for other utility projects around county yards. Um, this one is to replace a Massey Ferguson tractor that uh, is. Uh, getting some agents, one of the roadside mowing tractors. It's the one that operates out of Correctionville and takes care of the eastern half of the county's uh, paved road system. Our first uh, bid is from Icon, Ag, and Turf. Oh, I do have uh, bid tabs for that. So. Total bid price as specified is $95,957.50. Trade in on the current county tractor in 1993 Massey Ferguson is $5,000. Net purchase price $90,957.50. Next bid is from SNS Equipment of Lawton, Iowa. Bid price is specified $90,000, less trade in $7,500, net purchase price $82,500. The final bid is from DK Implement. Uh, their main office is out of Pomeroy, Iowa. They have a uh, sales facility in Correction. Total price as specified $69,960, less trade in of $5,000. Uh, net purchase price $64,960. I request that the board uh, return the quotations to the county engineer for examination and recommendation for award. So moved. Second. Second by DeWitt. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Item H for action is to consider approval of a contract for gravel stockpiling at 10 stockpile locations for FY18. 
We've negotiated prices with Hallett Materials of uh, Wall Lake, Iowa for supply of our stockpiles for fiscal year 2018. Total price for the stockpile materials at the uh, locations, $982,625. Recommend approval of the contract. So moved. Second. Second by Potterbaum. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. I have your signed signatures. Item 17 from the Board of Supervisors, myself, is an action item for the creation of a standardized annual evaluation form for department heads. Uh, Woodbury County Supervisor Liaisons should begin evaluating department heads annually, that is over a calendar year as we appoint uh, liaisons uh, on this board over a calendar year with a standardized performance evaluation. This is long overdue. Uh, we had discussion in the past about the role of supervisors supervising. Uh, this will not be uh, an unfamiliar recommendation uh, to Supervisor Taylor uh, because as noted last year, uh, different uh, evaluation of goals documents were composed by liaisons or the chair uh, for department heads that, hire, that are hired and answer directly to the Board of Supervisors. Uh, this was a, a baseline because in the past uh, we had discovered it had not been done annually uh, on a countywide basis. And in conversations with uh, HR Director Gilliland, I came up with uh, this uh, a rough timeline of, of uh, getting this before the Board. Uh, by or before our October 31st meeting. Uh, as was done last year, uh, these evaluations were uh, completed in the November-December time frame. That gave supervisors uh, roughly a year to evaluate performance. The difference I'd like to see this year is that instead of simply having a discussion of goals, uh, we would have a discussion of how goals were met, how expectations were met. We'd have some uh, feedback. Uh, that could be retained, and we would have that to look back on because as, as uh, I found out coming on as a new supervisor, uh, there, were, there were considerable gaps in uh, the evaluations of, of department heads over the years, and, and some of our department heads have been with us for a long time, and so I'd like to see this uh, be approved. Um, I'd like there to be a standardized form uh, because last year, what we had to work with, again, as I mentioned in the agenda item, is a sort of a narrative that was suggested by the chairman uh, that we would follow some sort of a, a general understanding of what to ask for, what to document. But because supervisors all have different styles, there were several different, you know, there's varying links. There's, uh, you know, it's a narrative. This is something that you may discuss different items with different department heads, and that's, if we're going to be moving towards evaluating performance and giving some sort of feedback in that way, it's necessary that it be standardized to a degree and we evaluate fairly and we have uh, that discussion of, of goals that were established in 2016 as well as set new goals. Uh, it, it shouldn't be a foreign concept to, uh, to anyone in the management world uh, what this, you know, the utility of this and having that sort of uh, feedback. So I'd like to invite Director Goland up if if, uh, if you had any thoughts on this um, and then open it up to board discussion. I think uh, standardization is an excellent process. I, I do agree strongly with the uh, Chairman Ong that uh, there had not been a good systematic uh, review of department heads with some huge gaps there. It makes it very difficult for us to formulate goals as a county that are achievable if we don't have goals for our department heads. So I, I think it would be, I, I think that's it's just absolutely the right direction to go. 
Very good. Uh, does anyone have questions for Ed? If not, you can take a seat and we can discuss. A couple of questions, if I may. So one of them would be, do you, and I know you don't have this finished right now, obviously, because that's what we're taking up tonight, but how much do you believe that this would differ from the state master uh, valuation that is used for all employees rather than? I, I think it, we see it perhaps a little more emphasis on uh, just the overall achievement of the department uh, as opposed just to the individual, achieve, the individual achievements because certainly uh, what a department head is evaluated on is how their department has grown, how the department, uh, and I mean that in their skills and their abilities and their work towards county goals. So I see it more as a, a just a, an, eva an overall department evaluation to be paired in there with the individuals. Okay. And in that, would you anticipate that there'd be a uh, room or area for narrative to be able to describe Absolutely. each of those points? Because one thing that I've always been hesitant on in evaluations is if everybody gets the acceptable and then there's no real feedback. So if that's a possibility, I'd, I'd appreciate that. I think that's a good possibility. And I, I think you, you can have some things happen with an employer, with a department head that uh, are really completely unacceptable. But at the same time, you can have some very positive things that they've done. So you have to make allowance for that in that narrative. And I, I think that's extremely important. In, in other words, sometimes a check mark needs some explanation to it. And I think that's a good balance. You know, what I want to see is just that the same questions are being uh, commented on, you know, from different department head to, you know, across the board. So there's no uh, no disparities. Mr. Padalon. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is for Ed or for those who've been on longer, but how many department heads do we have that answer to the board? Nine, I believe. Or, or nine? Nine. I was trying to just put them together. That, I, I, I was writing them down as we went that. because I, there's there's quite a few that Siouxland District Health doesn't, Conservation Board doesn't, Emergency Management. So they're in some unique situations. Because I, I, I tried it a couple of times. I came up with different numbers every time. So <laughs> just doing it from memory. Oh. I have to take off my shoes to count. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw a hand raised. D did you like? No. Okay, okay, very good. Yeah, we do deal with, uh, as a county government, of course, different oversight and different departments that the board may help to fund or, or, or have present at our department head meetings that you know, receive oversight from a, from a performance standpoint from another uh, you know, appointed body or elected body. But there are obviously those that we are you know, responsible for supervising and I do think it's fair to give that, um, I don't know uh, what, what other word to use besides power or, <coughs> or, or oversight to the appointed supervisors over those different departments. That's one of the important roles of the chair and uh, uh, because those, I would like to see those supervisors have that ability to write that narrative, to uh, judge that performance uh, so that you know someone that's watched that department head in action for almost a year can look back on the last uh, report and make their own rather than just having it all be on on one of us. Of course, if there's, you know, as last year, it, there were uh, some cases where then Chairman Taylor would take over and, and, and offer to write uh, one of those if, if, you know, whatever reason it was not able to be done by anyone else. So we do owe it to our department heads, I think, to give them some sort of status update and to receive their feedback and have that documented and we've certainly been moving in that direction with our with the true speak initiative and communication having things documented but but an annual evaluation again is nothing foreign comments Mr. taylor all right i'm sorry for a second then so i, I applaud uh, you for bringing this forward i think it's a good step for accountability but also to champion and shepherd growth you know you don't know what you're uh, improvement metrics are or expectations are of your employer unless you have those conversations. So, a couple of a couple of questions along with this, um, board administrative staff. So, and I'm thinking about a couple of folks in front of us as well as Karen. Um, my assumption is that would fall underneath the chair. 
but is that yeah. yours as well? Okay. So we're down three. Um, and then beyond that, the other question, because some of these fall in, I've got, and if I could just list them off, building services, emergency services, planning and zoning, economic development, juvenile detention, secondary roads, the human resources director, uh, and veteran affairs, is that one that, uh, and that, I know it has a board, I'm just wondering is that an annual? Commission, but I, from my conversation with other uh, counties, similar type of setup, uh, the valuation did lie with the, um, the valuation and supervision did lie with the board of supervisors. So that's one. So that'll be a part of your recommendation to the board once you figure out exactly which positions would receive which standardized form. Yes, sir. Thanks. And this is a this is good for you know to set a expectation, some accountability for our, our HR director to get this to the board, and and I think you'll you know be uncovering those questions and and finding out finding out what uh, makes the most sense. And then where there's a dual role, would you anticipate that Good those? Good question. Um, as in the past, I think it would be helpful for uh, if there's two supervisors assigned as oversight for them to come to a agreement and conduct that evaluation, interview, whatever you want to call it, uh, together. Uh, if that becomes an issue, then we can discuss as a board having appointments of primary and secondary uh, liaisons and it would fall to the primary, but that's just uh, I don't anticipate any sort of any sort of disagreement, uh, but of course that's a possibility, and so that's not necessarily my call. I think we should talk about that as a board if that's going to be an issue. Does that answer it? I think so. And the only other thing I'd say is I, I think it'd be helpful maybe if we had a, a re best recommended process, which could be meeting beforehand with the person discussing goals and then afterwards, it just seems like it'd be nice to have some uniformity so it wasn't, well, I met with my liaison and then afterwards I get to, to go through the evaluation but somebody else got it in the till. You know, it right. just might be a good process wise that everybody has the same uniformity as if it was one person. And I know that's difficult with five different people but to the extent that we can. But again, I think it's a good idea so appreciate it. Ed, if you could also compose then some sort of a memo with a recommended process. Sure. I think that would be helpful. Uh, I think we're asking for it, so you don't need to worry about stepping on any toes. Good. Thank you. Uh, but it is fair to have that expectation to not re simply receive something in your mail till. And When would you like to have that uh, memo back? Uh, same date as you bring the standardized form to us. Okay. At least by October 31st. And that's just to give the board some flexibility November and December. Uh, to conduct those meetings, and it doesn't have to be just one meeting, uh, but it needs to be at least one meeting. Mr. Taylor. Sorry, I know I said last question, but I lied. Um, the, real, the real last question is this. So we all uh, have an interest in knowing how department heads are doing, and, and for the most part, are doing very well and doing great work. How does the rest of the board get that? I know in the past that I think we put a copy in the everybody's till, I don't know if that's something else to. Yeah, and, and I would applaud you last year for, for doing that, uh, realizing that once there's an evaluation of goals or an evaluation of performance, uh, after it's been vetted by the supervisors, it should be shared with the rest of the board uh, confidentially and also with HR directors. So that practice would certainly continue. And I, I think at times, uh, one thing, one thought I may add just for consideration. There are times when the different department heads are going to interact with enough different people. It's, we all touch a lot of people uh, that uh, perhaps not only the primary uh, individual might put the evaluation and be, the, be responsible for the majority of the, of the uh, evaluation, but other comments from other board members I think would be welcome too. But you may see things that uh, the person who's most directly involved doesn't. Sure. Well, that's one of the reasons we have committee reports is we can all be updated how things are going and we can certainly follow up ourselves, And but it's helpful to funnel it through a few liaisons. Very good. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any other thoughts? 
again, we couldn't have done this without uh, the evaluation of, of goals last year, and so that's, you know, again, the baseline. I would expect that those documents would be referenced during all of these evaluations. I will move to direct the Human Resources Department to produce a standardized performance evaluation of department heads. Second. Uh, second. A, a second is forthcoming. <laughs> for board approval at the October 31st meeting or earlier uh, for board members to evaluate the performance of department heads over the 2017 calendar year in the months of November, December. Seconded by DeWitt. Uh, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say nay. Passes 5-0. Thank you very much, everybody. <coughs> Item 18 is the chairman's report. Nothing specific to report. It was, of course, a holiday weekend. Uh, today, though, I did participate in the NACO conference call for the Programs and Services uh, Standing Committee, of which I am one of the four esteemed vice chairs. Uh, it was mostly an introductory meeting, and there will be a follow-up, which I'll report on more extensively. Are there any other reports on committee meetings? Mr. Taylor. Uh, historic committee meeting, and if you've seen the three large displays at the top of the steps, um, those were created. Those are going to be used at Art Splash. Thank you very much to Jim Young and to Lisa McNeil for volunteering over the Labor Day weekend and having a, a kid-centric uh, activity. Um, so that'll be great. This thing's coming together. Um, we have pricing for a thousand. 24-page uh, reprints of American Bungalow, a 16-page kids' booklet, the eight-page fold-out self-guided tour, and I think we have things um, kind of locked and loaded for uh, an audio tour. I was at the Black Hills, and I found devices that we can actually hold to the ear as a transducer, and uh, it's pretty cool. So I think that thing is coming along, and a lot of good volunteers. Rex Mueller, uh, our new police chief, also introduced... We're not going to show it to you quite yet, but the, uh, the design uh, of the poster um, and talked about 30, or I'm sorry, 50 uh, signed limited editions uh, being uh, screen printed uh, for a very, very reasonable cost. Let me put it that way. So, Do you want to talk about some of the ramping up on that? So what we're looking to do is, uh, this thing's really cool. Um, the, all of the artistic, what they're doing is they're doing a photographic display, but then it gets screen printed. So we're talking about doing an unveiling of this, um, perhaps at the interpretive center, maybe even up here, um, having some drum roll uh, and, and fanfare along with that. Also engaging different community groups as well as media outlets uh, to do different stories of uh, craftsmen and artisans and their lives uh, leading up to the event. Uh, what am I missing, anything? Uh, I think you already mentioned some of the other graphic design, the smaller versions. Yeah, so there's a couple of other versions that were like the B and C choice, but they're equally uh, Perhaps good. Perhaps invitations. Mm -hmm. For uh, invitations for the banquet, um, perhaps even another teaser, so to speak, in the paper two or three months prior, so um, things are coming together. Any other reports on committee meetings? I got a question on this one, though. Is there any anticipated load on the security team with all these extra people coming through? Do we want to entertain putting an extra body on the security team? I mean, if we're going to have that many more visitors come through here. For the first through the fifth in May or even earlier? Well, I, I mean, I, I just think it's a valid question. Yeah, are we, yeah. are we anticipating that many more people? I would say uh, the first to the fifth, I think, of May, we're talking 2018, I think may be very, very busy. And I think that that might be um, certainly appropriate during that week. Um, just to have an extra extra body on. I could see that. I don't know before that um, how many more visitors we'll have. I'm liking to think that the audio tour is going to be so good um, that we're going to have that many more, but I'm, not, I'm just not sure prior to that. But I could definitely see that week um, needing maybe an extra person or two. 
we've uh, spoke about targeting the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. each day okay. uh, rather than the entire day. So we might have a demonstration or a seminar sort of a deal in the morning and then we'd have a sponsored lunch and then afterwards we might have an informative dignitary come and speak or some sort of show and tell or a tour. Uh, so if that helps, we, we are planning that period of time each day, but uh, it's pretty far ahead to think about budgeting for staff, I would say. I think it's a good question to keep in mind as we go forward. Some of the dignitaries might have their own security, especially when the governor comes. Anything else on that, that one? I, I did have a meeting with the third judicial district of corrections. Again, right now the biggest dealing is the unknown for the coming budget. Because they're, they're hoping this year maybe the state will let them know a little earlier than it did last year that they were taking seventy thousand dollars away. But I told them that that is what it is in Des Moines. You never know when you're going to get told, uh, and they have been scheduling and programming for not filling one position. Uh, so they're right now we think we've got a budgeted because we know the seventy thousand is again gone this year, but whether or not it'll be more we don't know yet. But uh, they've been doing a real good job. Unfortunately, part of the problem is, like I talked about the last time we met, they're the person handling the low risk <clears throat> to reoffend. Instead of one person handling 100, it's going to be 500 and maybe more. And that still worries me a little bit. I think you're giving some of those people the um, opportunity to reoffend when you're hoping they don't. <laughs> but, mm. but that is what it is. But they're dealing with it pretty well, I think. I think they've got a good grasp on it handling it well. They probably had. Any other reports on committee meetings? Item 20 then, any citizen concerns? County Engineer Mark Nura. This Friday, Woodbury County is hosting the Hungry Canyons Alliance meeting. It'll be at the Bronson Community Center. <coughs> a brief tour hoping one or more of the board members might be able to attend one could welcome to they've uh, we've received a great deal of grant money uh, from this group but we'll be showing them some of our uh, current and past projects so. could you send the board some of that invitation information what well, should been did none of you have received it I got it okay. I will I will get it out to the rest of you then tomorrow morning so very good. I didn't realize you weren't all on the mailing list, so yeah, I know you get inundated probably with email, so I hadn't uh, I hadn't sent it again, but I will. So. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any board concerns? I did want to bring up a couple of things. The uh, chamber dinner on Thursday. Did we have a quorum on that that we need to post for? I believe so. And then on uh, Monday, September 11th, the Mobile Chamber invited us. Uh, I, I was planning to try to get out of work to go to that. I didn't know if anyone else was. I will be, I will be going. And I, we uh, have a third, then we probably need to. I go. saw that your email was replied to already and noted that it was just you and I. Okay. So there won't be a quorum there. Um, and I'm not sure I got the email. On September 11th. Right. Uh, it was originally an invitation to the liaisons. Was it? Oh, I thought it was an invitation to all of us. Okay. Well. Oh, I don't feel left out, but I'll just be over here. <laughs> I can't attend anyway, so. Certainly, we will issue a notice if you'd like to get in contact with David and see, see about that. Okay. The issuer of the invitation, David Gleiser. And our board office will work on that quorum uh, notification for the chamber dinner. So we won't need to act on that. Any other board concerns? Thank you. We are adjourned.